Uh, hi everyone, so uh, this is part 2 of my video okay, on uh, OnlyFans and its con uh, connection to the virulent culture of narcissism. Um, in this case of OnlyFans, I think that I, I'm going to actually uh, continue from where I stopped uh, considering that um, this video is, uh, the last video was actually quite long. Uh, this one will be slightly shorter and uh, uh, I want to actually uh, instead of like de de I mean instead of de de dealing with uh, very like you know general um, general uh, examples or views, I want to actually just uh, maybe just talk a little bit more about something that is more uh, personal. I mean it didn't happen in my life, but it happened in um, the case of someone whom I know personally, um, and uh, in the case of only fans. Uh, I mean, I'm, I believe that actually OnlyFans is not a actually very good uh, platform in most cases, not just on account of its adult uh, content, but mainly because uh, I feel that uh, as a platform, it actually encourages narcissism and yeah, so especially magnetic narcissism. So um, if you uh, were to think a little bit more about the idea of magnetic narcissism like you know if we go back to the myth uh, the original Greek myth of uh, narcissist um, that there was the, the youth okay who became the flower uh, we know that uh, in the uh, Greek myth narcissist was totally obsessed with his uh, beautiful image and uh, he was extremely you know haughty and uh, disregarding of uh, the authority of the gods and I think as a result of that the goddess I think Athena yeah Athena uh, cursed um, was it Athena or yeah it's not probably Athena or Themis one of the goddesses uh, actually cursed him to actually um, stay put in that same area by the river and to look non-stop at his uh, image uh, as his punishment, the total lack of the inability for redemption um, evolved into this um, situation where even after he died, he was still looking at his image in the, you know, in the river, and he metamorphosized into that flower, which was known as the Narcissus flower. So, um, yeah. It's a really interesting myth, but uh, yeah, I think it also uh, has a lot of morality in it because uh, I think for those who know what the Narcissus flower looks like, uh, it actually bends down over most of the time. And uh, I mean, it's not just a very beautiful flower, but it gives off, gives off a rather intoxicating smell. Yeah, it's a very overpowering smell. So um, the flower itself is pretty symbolic of the the yeah the sin of uh, pride and uh, the sins of pride and also self obsession that that comes with narcissism. So okay, but to link this back to only fans, uh, I think the real real problem with only fans, much like any. Um, social media outlet like that which is a uh, pay-per-view uh, and also pandering sexual content is that uh, much like the the philosophy of new platonism uh, which was also subsequently very active even in the um, Byzantine period yeah this Byzantine period of uh, Western history and um, that would be the late Roman, Eastern Roman Empire. Yeah, um, you know, y'all probably those who know their history probably know that there was a debate over the use of religious icons, and uh, whether we should actually use religious images to depict Christ and the saints. And uh, for those who were, uh, you know, iconoclastic, those meaning that those who were image breakers, their argument was that. Um, those who actually worshipped the uh, images or venerated the images had been um, substituting the reality of God, the divine, the saints whom we should be uh, venerating or worshipping with uh, 
the image that actually represents them. So instead of the original forms out there uh, beyond the physical world, uh, we have substituted the the icons. Okay, uh, I'm not I'm not getting into any religious debate here, but uh, I think that if you put a parallel between that argument against the image, so uh, the problem with OnlyFans is that uh, we end up falling for I mean those who know us but those consume the image actually uh, and I mean images of the videos and pictures that are considered pornography material uh, they end up actually um, yeah falling for the image not the real person and I mean no one probably falls for the real person uh, it's, everything is just a simulacra it's kind of like a copy or imitation so um, yeah, that the, the, the claim of whether is uh, you know is is harmless is a really remote point, but um, I think there's a lot of hypocrisy going on, especially if we to link that to the just in the context of magnificent narcissism, because I think a lot of the times, especially in the case of the creators of OnlyFans, especially for the males, the male creators, um, we probably have to realize that the uh, consumer audience for this would be mainly, uh, yeah, gay men, okay, and um, as that friend of mine who actually admitted to uh, to uh, paying for OnlyFans uh, told me, uh, he actually um, he actually paid to watch uh, men who are bodybuilders or very muscular men. Uh, posing for him or doing different things uh, at the peak condition uh, yeah it was just like to me I thought it was like you know different no different uh, yeah it's no different from like you know uh, jerking off and touching yourself uh, in response to uh, pornography and uh, but what's the point when it's actually uh, an image a fantasy and someone whom you don't actually have a real connection with emotionally or spiritually so um, but I mean it, it, we know that you actually that, that that kind of culture is has full of a lot of hypocrisies because uh, I don't think he wanted to admit that but uh, a lot of the creators uh, of that content I mean those those male creators might not even be gay they might be heterosexual or bisexual and um, who are looking to actually make uh, money out of their audience, their, their, their gay audience. Uh, so in this case, the, the audience become become this uh, bunch of sims, S-I-M-P-S, sims, meaning those dumb, uh, uh, those so-called unsuspecting fans who just don't question the, what they consume. Uh, yeah, it's a really ridiculous things, but uh, really ridic ridiculous thing. But uh, if we were to look at it this way, um, isn't it a kind of reflection on the narcissism of this male content creators themselves too? That uh, you know they don't really really care for their audience. Why would they bother? They are making money of you. They despise the audience or those who actually pay. And uh, of course, I I don't get why people pay for that kind of thing because uh, I asked another friend and my friend just told me. But do you know that there are people who pay for such stuff? Like uh, he told me, oh, you know, there's this one um, uh, one social media app. So was it grind grinder? Yeah, grinder. He was telling me about it. He told me that one of his friends who was actually gay had told him that uh, he he had actually subscribed. To grind, you know, they pay a monthly fee so as to go online to uh, hook up with other men. And uh, I was thinking, wow, paying that amount of money to hook up and to possibly get into dangerous situations of, uh, you know, possibly getting exposed to STDs and stuff. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, but but that that's a different situation from uh, OnlyFans. But even then, the idea that uh, this audience members are actually paying to adore and you know uh, worship at the shrine <laughs> of uh, content creators who really don't care about them anyway 
who are just fleecing off them of their money. Uh, it's just kind of weird. Yeah, and, and it, it does kind of remind me of the, you know, of the idea of narcissists because um, he doesn't really, really care for the other, he didn't really care for anyone like the goddesses or the gods and uh, he was really, really disrespectful and obviously that led to his curse and on top of that, there was also the nymph echo. So, you know, the idea of echoism is basically echo in bits and pieces the opinions and words of other people. And uh, that was what actually uh, happened with Narcissus and Echo, and Echo the myth. Uh, she basically faded away and became an Echo. Uh, yeah, so the, the this aside, I think the other poem with only fans is actually that I, I think that links it to Magnetic Narcissism or the culture of Narcissism is the, um, the issue of the ethics, the work ethics. Uh, I think I'll actually uh, mention a little bit about this with uh, regards to the idea of the stealer narcissist, the idea of money and how uh, narcissistic people uh, and narcissists do not actually care much for uh, hard work. Um, they want to do the best possible mean, uh, things or means to get that money without uh, putting any hard work. So, um, so as a result, they don't go through the traditional route of... Uh, money making such as uh, you know getting a uh, 9 to 5 job or working for someone or even just even studying their own uh, decent business that wouldn't actually end up uh, tapping into things like uh, sex or prostitution uh, but uh, if you think about it with uh, the case of OnlyFans creators quite a number of them uh, I mean they were ob obviously they had a choice between um, doing more regular work but for them given the choice between um, that regular work and only fans um, there's that allure of uh, you know making big bucks or making big money uh, by simply putting your body out there uh, putting out your body as a product for people to consume to ogle or to uh, yeah, to perf like in pervert to pervert and to them it's like easy money because it's a I mean it's an easy money grab in that sense if you can actually um, yeah if you can just do that for I mean after all if you can do that for a few minutes uh, they will be thinking why not as opposed to working for hours to, to not just hours but even possibly months and years to get the same amount of money um, but I think that actually we know that decent people won't do that kind of, or they won't choose OnlyFans <laughs> in that uh, they, they do realize that um, even if they could do it, uh, they don't want to risk the loss of their self-esteem and uh, their self-love. So, um, yeah, I mean, I had, a, you know, this photographer once asking me, uh, it's, a, it's a Thai photographer, he just asked me after seeing some of my fitness profile the pictures, that I took professionally with certain um, South Korean photographers uh, when I was actually still quite active in uh, competition in the fitness industry. Uh, the one thing he asked me was, uh, do you have only fans? Uh, do you have like uh, pictures of you like totally naked? So I was like, what should I do that? <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't say it to him directly, but I just told him, oh no, I, so I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have only fans. Uh, yeah, uh, but to go back to the point, I think that, uh, yeah, it's, it's not really traditional work as a whole, uh, as a platform. It, it reveals the whole aggressiveness with which people opt for the easy way out by selling themselves. So uh, you can't just call it normal work or even just saying that, oh, you know, we should... Uh, legalized sex work, you know, it, it's not that, uh, it is very much a feeling of the narcissistic work ethos that, uh, you know, you take the easy way out to make as much money from other people, even if it involves uh, things like sex and uh, scandals, yeah. So, okay, anyway, that's it for now about uh, my two cents worth. Uh, I do believe that uh, quite a number of uh, <laughs> Narcissists are actually on OnlyFans. Um, oh, although I can't really, really prove it without any uh, real substantial interviews of them, I do believe that some are, however, forced into it by virtue of economic necessity. 
but (uh) ya but I think that ultimately it will only (uh) encourage this (uh) virulent culture of narcissism and so (uh) we ought to actually be more careful when we go online nowadays and (uh) ya if possible you know if you feel that there's a need maybe it's good as an idea to limit your social media usage okay especially keep safe (uh) from narcissist okay (uh) okay that's it for now okay I hope everyone has a good night okay bye bye